Hello, everybody. I think we're getting close to ending this, so let's try to do that. I want to try to get this all done in one sit down. These games are best played all at once, anyway. And I don't see a light switch, and it's bugging the fuck out of me. There we go. There's a light switch. Hi, Mom and Dad. Yeah, these are all the fucking uh, cards and shit. Sistine Chapel, yeah, Michelangelo. And the rest of the Ninja Turtles. Give me a second here. Okay, sorry about that. Hmm. Another copy of that. Did they publish the whole entire thing? Is that what that is? Sam, since you refused to hear us out on this afternoon, your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we are absolutely clear. You are grounded for the rest of the month from social and telephone privileges and from using your car for any time except going to and from school. We understand that you are going what you are going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of behavior at school. And clearly, once your privileges are reinstated, we can't allow you to have your bedroom closed, door closed, while Lonnie is at the house. Okay. This is the last word on the matter. Get back to get back on course so that this won't happen again. Dad, in all caps. So shit went down. Shit went down in this broken household. <sighs> the feels. Crumbled manuscripts. Don't give up in this money. Terence L. Greenbrier. Huh. Don't know what that's all about. First off, congratulations, Janice Greenbrier, regional director. And I say congratulations because, come on, you're going to take the job, right? What are you writing for and waiting for? An engraved invitation? Call them back. But in the meantime, let's discuss this little outing you had with our favorite something clad hunk. What a blast, but you sound like you're reading a lot into an innocent night out. You're sure there's something there? You said he has an out-of-town girlfriend. You're sure they're not serious? Okay, well, whatever, in person, blah, letters. So there was probably a cheating of some sort going on. Probably broke the family up a bit. There's stuff out here. Is that a greenhouse? I think I remember seeing that on the board before, so... Let's, uh, continue. The fuck am I hearing? That was weird. Oh god, everything in here is grabbable. Really? Well, fuck that. None of it seems like it's actually useful unless there's, like, something on the floor, but fuck it. Um, I didn't expect that this would be like an amnesia thing where you could just go ahead and pick everything up while you were going through this house and shit, but it's neat. Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Blair request owner of your present to the marriage of their daughter, Helen Margaret, to Mr. Richard Morris Pattermack. Whatever. Huh. Sam schedule working at Crown Burger on Better Road, whatever, blank. Okay. Yes. Victory is mine. And what about you? The accidental save here. There's a lot of books and shit going on here.
Colonel finally came over to get his game. I'd been dreading it. But he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little. I started reading it. And then there I was, crying at the kitchen table. He asked what was wrong, and I was thinking about how we used to be friends, how much I'd taken for granted. But instead, I told him about school, and Dad, and Lonnie. And then how sorry I was that I wasn't his friend anymore. He gave me a hug and said it was going to be okay. For some reason, I almost believed him. Samantha and Daniel were in the woods one day. It was sunny and they were on an adventure, but they went up to the something part of the woods and it got dark. Daniel said, are you scared? And so Samantha said, no, are you? Yeah, it's like a little kid story. It's probably the story. Yeah. That's the story. This game's really hitting me in the feels. Hmm. I mean, I guess that kind of does show you chronology of what happens, so... We're starting to fill in the holes that were right before us getting home. So let me hope that this missive finds you well. Hell, it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? Worry not, we aren't the feds, the men in black, or any worse sort of creeping fascist hobgoblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown Dimension is what you might call a specialist publishing house. We traffic in the weird, the ahead of its time, the lost but not forgotten by a small but dedicated group of plugged in bibliophiles type out there. Mass marketing, shunning, visionary expression that refuses to be taken on anything by its own terms. We've had an unparalleled run since our inception four years ago, unearthing and reviving Christ or zombie timeless works such as whatever. It's Inside Me by Jens Killer. But ever since we discovered tattered copies of your accidental series at a church, rummage sale, whatever. Dark American Outsider Arts. Just a kind of forgotten portal into the 20th century civilization anxieties and delusions that our readers lose their mind over. America wants, but John Russell... Okay, so I've typed plenty. What do we want from you? We want your permission to reprint the work since your original publisher, Mercury Books, folded a decade ago. We want you to supply a new forward to the books to appear in a brand new editions of blank. We produced. We look forward to embarking. So he got republished. And this is probably the one, the new one. Yeah. And I think I've seen a couple of those around, so he got republished by different people. Sam, your mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary, June 3rd to 7th. We will be coming in the gorge, or camping in the gorge, but we will give you all, give you a call on the way home. Sorry, the kitchen is still mid-renovation. Never trust a contractor. $40 is on the table to order pizza while we're gone. Be good. Anything else going on in here? Huh. Gay. Fucking fast food places, yo. No, oh, it's lights. Fuck! I thought it was the door. Anything else going on in this shit? No, I think we're good with the cabinets and everything, so... That works. Nothing up there. And then three ring binders. Okay. I think we're good in this room. So, on to the next. I really hope that there isn't anything that's going to wind up being on any one of those cassette tapes, because I don't want to listen to the whole fucking things. 
A going away show for Lonnie D, Girl Scout. Last show ever, all ages. Lonnie had her going away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. And I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. So sad. Damn. Sam, I wish you knew how to explain it better. The army is a thing I grew up with. It's part of me. My dad's army friends are like family. I've always known it was where I'd end up. I'd never thought of it any other way. I wish things could be different. Maybe someday when I'm settled at a base and you're done with college and you're a famous writer, I can rebuild a tank engine with my eyes closed. Things will be different and we can be together until then. Hmm. So now we're in the greenhouse. This is like the last room to check out, man. So what's in here? Yep. Accidental human. Dear Cass, I can't tell you what a joy it is to see John Russell back in print. Thank you very much for sending along copies with the uh, new editions. The cover art is really something. I know you've said that Unknown Dimension isn't in the business of printing new material, but... This revived interest in my work has brought on a wave of inspiration, resulting in a manuscript that completes John Russell's journey. Which I think you may find intriguing. It is reflective and introspective, without forgetting the excitement and weirdness that Unknown Dimension readers expect. I hope this might be an exciting new direction for Unknown Dimension to pursue, at the very least. Okay. And then what about this cover copy? Been almost 20 years since you know, the call president left. No, the life you saved this time will be your own. Should have turned that on 20 minutes ago. Under the stairs. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off, then ran up to the attic to look through our photos, to find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past, and there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I cried, and she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up, and I was finally alone. Key. That's where it is. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. 
I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic and wait. Oh, I thought it was going to be a cutscene for a minute there. Guess not. All right. What do we have? Okay, maybe that isn't the one thing that we need to grab up here. I was trying to avoid that because I was like, okay, it's probably going to have me check that and then end of game, but I think we're getting really close to a conclusion here and I don't want to, like, fucking... Yeah. Sam, I'll always remember what we had. Stay strong. I love you. Kick ass. <laughs> Katie, uh, I fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie and my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it, and it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't, she couldn't think of anything but me, and us, and that she couldn't go through with it, with the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can and get in your car and come find me. And let's just drive until we find somewhere for us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said, yes. Yes. Oh god damn it, I missed the fucking letters. I'm so sorry. That I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad. And you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again, someday. Love, Sam.
Oh, I can resume. Cause I gotta, I gotta check the shit that was there at the end. I didn't check that book, and that bugs me. Oh no, that ends the game then when you do that. Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you. All right, well, I'm gonna close out of this then. So. Where do I begin with this fucking game? Um, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was not expecting an experience like that at all from a walking simulator nonetheless. Um, I don't know. I still stand by the whole statement that I do have with this kind of a thing where it's I don't believe in paying fucking 30 bucks or 20 bucks or none of them are really that much but like I don't feel that I I don't know I guess it would depend but I wouldn't really pay out money for a walking simula simulator just because it's good for one run one it's given a good story usually pretty much always a good story with these kind of things but it goes on for one good playthrough, and then you're done with it. And gameplay-wise, when I'm paying for a game, you know, it's more you're just paying for a story, but... I don't know. Because now I'm a little knocked off of my rocker for where I stand for walking sim games because of that, because that was way better than I was expecting. Actually. It didn't make me cry, unfortunately, but... Eh. <sighs> That's gonna keep me in, like, thought now for the rest of the fucking day, playing this game. God damn. There were some cliches with the story with uh, Sam and Lonnie throughout that, you know, usual love story cliches and stuff like that, but I mean... When you do think about it, cliches kind of are that way for a reason. There, there's a reason why it becomes a thing that just is. And... I don't know. It was alright. It was pretty well put together. I feel they could have... Unless I missed a couple of things, maybe they could have put a little, shed a little more light on the parents and why they were, what they, you know, what was up with the parents and shit, but from what I got out of it is there was a little bit of an affair anyway with the parents making it a little rough. The father was having his own little problems going on with uh, printing his books and uh, being a writer. Whereas the mother was like, you know, part of that whole conservation society for like the national parks and shit. So, it worked together really well because everybody had their own separate problems and stuff going on and their own different things that meshed together with the family. And uh, this person's dealing with that and Sam's dealing with high school and all of this other stuff and falling in love and all of that other shit. So it kind of fits together where everybody has their own little piece of the story. And although I wouldn't, I was thinking like a broken household or something and she ran away, but I guess it was just, you know, to find Lonnie in the end, but that was charming. It was very charming to, um, to, you know, be part of that story there. Damn. I thought that they were going to elaborate a little bit more on the whole ghost thing, but I guess not. But that wasn't the real part of the story anyway, and I began to realize that as, like, the story kept continuing on with the voice and stuff, so... I guess that's everything that I need to say about this game, guys. Um, Gone Home, there you go. If you have a PS4, it is going for free, or... Check it out on Steam, but uh, that's 
that's the game. Maybe you can find something I didn't, if you look into it, but... I'm gonna get the first part up now. That was, uh, that was an adventure there. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you later.